generational change could easily be called sea change because that kind of change is monumental when we turn over a generation and a new generation really assumes its spot. And this happens, obviously, every generation, and I'm going to say every generation or two, because technically a generation is about 20 years, but it really doesn't work that way. For example, I see Gen Xers here, and you Gen Xers know that you are a smaller cohort that fits between two large cohorts. One is mine, the boomers, uh, which, which fall at a big cohort, uh, called the great generation and the new one called the millennials so Gen Xers are feeling a bit left out don't f don't be that way I'll talk about you a little bit later on um, but anyway generation generational change happens about every 30 years or so um, historically generational change that we can remember would begin with the great generation which is pre-1946 it's my parents generation my parents were born in 19 one of them 1912 one of them 1914 they had a particular way of life that wasn't that different from their their parents except that they're the people who saw flight they're the people who saw the invention of the motor car they're the people uh, who also had to undergo cataclysmic change and adjustment to life through two earth-shattering events one was the great depression and one was world war ii um, the next generation was the baby boomers. They did, the great generation, our parents did everything they could to prevent us from having to undergo the same kinds of upheaval that those two events gave them. But we had two um, major events that um, I, I would have to say marked us. One was the Vietnam War, and the other was concurrent to that, uh, something called Woodstock. Everybody know what Woodstock was? Because so Woodstock was 500,000 people. They thought they were going to get 10,000 people to listen to some rock music in upstate New York. They got 500,000. Guess what? I was one of them. <laughs> I, was, I don't look like a Woodstocker, but I was there. So that shows you how things change. And then comes Gen Xers and uh, the baby boomers being 1946 to 1963. We're going to talk more about that. The Gen Xers start in 63, and they run to about 1978. So a smaller span of time. And Gen Xers, because they were sandwiched in, had a bit of a problem trying to get the boomers to leave jobs, which they still needed. And we still have that problem. We're going to talk about it today. Uh, but um, they fit in more or less like a continuation of the boomers and, and not particularly um, enjoying that. So along comes Gen Y, or as we call them, millennials. Uh, we also refer to them as the boomer echo. 1978 to 2000, some people will tell you, no, it's 1998, give or take. What it says is that uh, the, the youngest ones are about 18, the oldest ones are around 38, 39 years old. And they have two issues that, although they don't sound like world wars or uh, great depressions, are huge and very impactful to this generation. Uh, and they are the economic problems of today, which have resulted, are resulting in them not looking forward to the same standard of living or being able to generate the same standard of living as their parents, me and, and my uh, colleague, generational people. These people are busy taking over right now uh, and there are clear indications that they're taking over. So economic issues, and I, I didn't mention eco issues. They're worried about the future of the world, the ability to breathe air, climate change, and as Al announced, spring starts on Monday. He's right. Some people will say, that's nah, just El Nino. I think it might have something to do with climate change, don't you? But uh, I digress. Here are some examples of things that are outgrowths of what I describe as the takeover uh, by the millennials of, of what's going on out there. The sharing economy would be the first one. So the obvious ones you could name. You could talk about Uber. You could talk about uh, zip cars, U-car, shared bicycles. Anybody here, show of hands, anybody here ever heard of Rent the Runway? Nobody? Anybody here heard of Bag, Borrow, and Steal? Okay, somebody has. These are new chains, retail chains, springing up in the States, so you know they're going to be here soon. And what they are is rental clothing. So shared clothing. Why? Because millennials, A, either don't have or don't want to spend the money to buy an outfit to go to that special event, and if they go to that special event, they don't want to have to wear the same outfit to the next special event, so they'd rather rent it. Now, my generation's answer to that was, we went to a now defunct, because it didn't keep up, chain called Eaton's, and we bought the outfit that we wanted for the event, and we wore it, and the next day we boxed it, and we brought it back, and said, I'm not really happy with this. <laughs> and we got a refund. 
So maybe that's why bag, borrow, and steal is the name of one of these things. Rental clothing stores. The growth of texting would be another one. Now, if I'd, I could have sent you an email 15 years ago. Email's been pretty well part of the culture for, what, 15, 20, 25 years, I'd have to say. But texting 15 years ago was just emerging. The technology existed, but it wasn't used. So if I had sent you an email 15 years ago that had in it R-O-F-L or L-O-L or W-T-F, <laughs> you would have said, W-T-F is that? Um, as a matter of fact, it's funny how it finds its way into the culture. Have you seen the, uh, the advertisements for uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, a new movie yeah. with Tina Fey? So Whiskey Tango Foxtrot is phonetics. If you're an aviator, you know phonetics for WTF. So it, it's cultural. Online generation, certainly we could say that that's been introduced by millennials. The review sites, the booking sites, rate my prof, rate my doctor, Yelp, Trivago, homework assist, business problem solving, essay writing assistance, presentation prep, all of it is about 724 collaboration, and that's a word we're going to talk about a lot in the next 20 minutes or so, collaboration and contact, 724. Look at Justin Trudeau as an example of what millennials can do. People say, well, millennials didn't have much to do with it. The millennials don't vote. People under 30 don't really vote. No? He was elected because 68% of Canadians turned out and voted. 68% is a number that hasn't been seen in 25 years for voter turnout in Canada. Why did that happen? Because the millennials are taking their place and exercising the numbers that they possess to control society in a direction that they wanted controlled. They didn't want Stephen Harper. They wanted somebody more like them. They wanted somebody more liberal, small L and large, and they wanted a younger guy. So we've got Justin Trudeau. My conclusion to that portion is we, boomers, when I say we, are being forced out. So my message is, let go now and very nicely pass the baton. You've got to let go. So in summary, we know that everything is changing. And we're here to talk about millennials moving into the C-suite. That's what we used to call the executive suite. Now all the titles begin with C, so we call it a C-suite. Um, these people, some of you are these people, and people you work with are these people, have to run the companies that exist for them to survive. Why? Because the baby boomers started becoming 70 years old on January 1st of this year. The youngest baby boomers right now are 54 years old. So the first issue that we have to confront and that millennials have to confront and that people in the sphere that you operate in, employment, uh, have to confront is why are many baby boomers not leaving top positions? We had limited time where I'd start asking you to shout it out. But I'm going to give you four reasons and I'm going to highlight two of them. The first, uh, the first issue is uh, they don't trust millennials. Uh, they think that millennials are useless. So they, they don't trust millennials because they think they're stupid. They sit on, on smartphones and text all day. They have no concept uh, of what's going on. What's going on is that 724 mentality and play and work being intertwined and the ability to communicate being there ubiquitously all the time. Second, boomers still think that they're going to live forever. Okay, I always thought I was going to live forever. Don't all of you think you're going to live forever? Well, you're not. Okay? 70 is not the new 50. <laughs> 70 is just 70 with a hip replacement, for God's sakes. <laughs> 25% of the people born in the same year as me, 1947, are dead. <laughs> Third, the boomers need the money. Why didn't they need the money? Well, either the retirement nest egg never grew in the first place because they spent too much of it, or the retirement nest egg got hit in 08, 09, and millennials saw that, so they understand that. And finally, boomers just think that they can do things better. And that's because of a low experience transfer. What you're supposed to do if you're older is you're supposed to pass on your years of experience. Something you can only get by spending years doing anything uh, to the, uh, the next generation to come along. Some millennials, because uh, they're not perfect, think, well, I don't need any experience. I know how to do it better. That's not true of any generation. So it's for boomers to mold and build and work with the people who are coming next and pass that experience along. I said I would highlight two of them. The two that matter most are boomers still think that they're going to live forever, number one, and number two, they need the money. That's the reason they're sticking around. So I'm saying millennials are ready. 
And if they aren't ready, they will be because there's no alternative whatsoever. They're educated. They're careful about money. They're the biggest savers in the history of the world in terms of having cash in the bank. They are collaborative, which is a huge item. Um, and when I say they're collaborative, what I'm talking about is it's the first generation that truly has been born into a world where they don't believe there should be and they don't accept any prejudices. So if you say work in a group, number one, they like working in groups. Number two, that group will function 724 because they're electronically connected. Number three, they won't say I won't work with her because I don't work with women. They won't say I won't work with him because he's gay. They won't say I won't work with that person because they're of color. There, there is no prejudice within the millennial community, and that is a fabulous thing. So it makes for collaboration. They do live 724 lives. They crave feedback to a fault. They're desperate to grow and prosper, and their information sponges. So why are we boomers not moving along? Now, that brings me to the second issue. I talked about experience transfer, building a bridge. Anybody, uh, I guess you all follow the news. Anybody know that um, about two months ago, a major bridge cost $300 million, uh, fell down up in Nipigon, top of uh, Lake Superior. It was about a year or two old, so a brand new bridge. It, it didn't really fall down. What happened is uh, it came apart. So one side of the road went like that, and the other side went like that. And thank God nobody was on it, so nobody was killed, but it disconnected the Trans-Canada Highway. And if I'm not mistaken, they're still looking for the cause, which seems to be some kind of metal failure, and they're using ramps to get uh, traffic over it. Anyway, the, the reason that I use that metaphor is because uh, what we have to do in the world is we have to build a bridge, and it can't have one side this, uh, at this level and another side at that level and a ramp to join it. We have to build the bridge from both sides and let it join. And that's what happens in experience transfer. You've got one generation saying, I'm going to meet that generation, and I'm going to meet them at the proper place so that everything joins up. Um, as a matter of fact, it, it should be reasonably easy. Boomers don't get that millennials, for the most part, trust them. Why? Well, they lived at home for about 10 extra years, uh, and they asked and continue to ask for advice. And as far as I'm concerned, and I would hope as far as any boomer parent is concerned, we give it willingly. Um, I do, anyway, and I, and I hope all of you do. Third issue. It's important that the older always teach, because they always have taught, the young. That's what the whole passing of the torch means. It's always been true, whether we like it or not, it always will be true. But the young have to spin things their own way, because that's what young people do. And some of that is about behavior and style, which may differ from our own, and we have to accept that styles differ from our own. That happened between me and my parents. It happened between all of my generation and its parents. Millennials may not buy into, for example, the shirt and tie business attire mentality. Uh, they crave feedback more than an annual review that I got. They want it every day. In fact, if they can get it every hour. Um, they love, love to collaborate in work groups. I talked about that. Uh, boomers never did. Boomers always had a reason to want to go it alone. Uh, an aging boomer manager should get ready to be a teacher or a coach or both more than a snap to it boss because as soon as you become that do it now guy, you lose the millennials. They just don't relate to that at all. Millennials enjoy being inspired um, and the inspiration should always be in two minutes or less because they, they like two minutes or less. Uh, talk to them, make sure that they are close physically and technologically to their peers, supporter, superiors, and leaders. In my book, uh, and this is where we get to the closing, uh, I quote from a 2014 Deloitte survey, and I say, it says, millennials want to work for organizations that foster innovative thinking, develop their skills, and make a positive contribution to society. The study also reveals that millennials believe businesses are not currently doing as much as they could to develop their leadership skills, and that they need to nurture their future leaders, especially as they cannot count on them biding their time until senior positions arise. Translation, and this is me talking now, not the uh, quote from the book. If you're an aging boomer, my age, it's time to make sure that the new generation is in place and then get the hell out. We're the Neanderthals now.